Hey guys and welcome to this brand new video. Today we're going to talk about Signa Healthy Growth, the Investor Day 2022. And as always, we will start with a few numbers about Signa, then we'll take a more precise look in the business model of Signa. By that we'll use this lovely Investor Day presentation. And finally, we'll take a look at the long-term chart and at a daily chart and we'll use trading view for that and with that said let's go straight ahead and take a look at a few numbers as always we use seeking alpha for that the first thing that we can see is within the last year the price of the stock of sigma increased 33 percent which is quite interesting to notice because i think most of you know that as of today today is the 25th of october 2022 we are still in a bear market and the S&P is for sure not up 43%. First thing that we notice. The second thing is we've got a market cap of roughly $91 billion. Second, we got a pretty low PE ratio, uh, short, excuse me, pretty low short interest in my opinion of just 1.3%. A dividend yield of 1.4%. 5% roughly with dividend rate of $4.48 offer. I'm not totally sure whether that is right. We have to check that. I quite don't know where Seeking Alpha gets the number sometimes from. And we got a PE ratio of just 13. So it's not a super expensive stock. And we got earnings per share of $23. With that said, let's take a more precise look into a few more financial numbers. And the first thing that we take a look at is the total revenue grew as seen quite lovely here from roughly 30 billion to 180 billion in the 12 months trading and what we can see here is from 2018 to 2019 we have a, we had a massive spike so the revenue grew almost a hundred billion dollars and what we can see is if we take a look at the non-insurance activities revenue we can see here came a massive growth. I don't know, to be honest, but I would assume in 2018 or 2019, Cigna bought another company or had a merger with another company. Because if we take a look at the growth premiums annuity revenue, we can see that grew slowly or more slowly than the total revenue. If we take a look at the net income, we can see the net income grew from 1.6 billion to 5.5 billion in the last 12 months trading. What is quite interesting to know is we can see again from 2018 to 2019 quite large jump in the net income and a super high net income in 2020 and a decrease in 2021. Again, I don't quite know what exactly made that, but I will look it up and then I'll show you a picture if it has been an acquisition here in the video. If we take a look at the basic weighted shares outstanding, we can see that number decreased quite lovely. And then here from 2018 to 2019, it increased. So now I'm pretty sure that there has been an acquisition because what often happens is if you finance an an acquisition as a company you can do this by using multiple ways and one way is to offer new shares so new equity to the broad market and most likely that happened here another way is you buy a new company and you pay in shares so then the shareholders of the old company get shares from yours and that increases the share amount but I don't know this mentioned. If we take a look at the payout ratio, we can see that has been more than low with just four cents for quite a while. Now it increased to four dollars. And we can see in a 12 months trading we got $12.24. But as mentioned, I think we have to check that because sometimes I'm not totally sure whether seeking alpha has their numbers right. Let's do a straight ahead by using what I personally love is nasdaq then we type in signal and then we go here well we don't have to go to news but to the dividend history and yeah okay seeking alpha is right 
Sorry, my bad. And we can see that is perfect. One thing that we can do is when taking a look at financial numbers, take a look at the balance sheet. And here, quite importantly, in my opinion, take a look at the, where is it? Net debt. And we can see here, 2018, that increased. So yeah, I'm pretty sure they had an acquisition somewhere here from 2 billion to 38 billion. With that said, let's take a more precise look into the business model of Zigna. Healthy growth. To give it to you straight away, Cigna is a health insurance company just as United Health is or Humana. I'll make a video about United Health and Humana, so make sure you subscribe to my channel that you won't miss these videos. Let's go have significant progress since we last meet. Well, the two of us have never met, so I hope the next time we'll meet will also say significant progress. Faster acceleration of forces reshaping the healthcare. Forget the D, but reshaping healthcare. Two well positioned growth platforms. So, on one side, we got Evan Off, on the other side, we got Signal Healthcare. As we can see, over 70,000 colleagues work there, or in other words, over 70,000 employees. And what we can see is the earnings per share combined annual growth rate is, or they at least try to have an earnings per share growth rate of 10 to 30% and an attractive dividend. And there are three paths for the growth to give us these 10 to 30%. And the first one is foundation. So pharmacy benefits, US commercial and international health, that makes up 60% of the revenue. The other one being accelerated. So special pharmacy, Evanoff, healthcare services. We'll take a look at these services later and the US government. And the third one being cross enterprise leverage. So deepening the relationships with the customer, driving digital services or in general, in general using digitalization and generating free cash flow. Love it. Today's discussion. Today's discussion includes ESG as it does with every company nowadays. Our growth priorities. First, continue to invest in US commercial and pharmacy benefit services. I love that. Second, drive savings and opportunity in special pharmacy. Okay, yeah, savings are always good. And if there's also an opportunity, well, I like that. Build and grow Evanoff Care Services. Grow services sounds good because if you grow your services, you can charge more. Build and grow US government. Governments always amazing business partners because if you have the government as your business partner, they pay well. And fifth, capitalization on digital first cross enterprise leverage. How we will grow Evanoff, how we will grow Signal Healthcare, strong long term shareholder value. And as they've mentioned earlier, long term average annual adjusted per share growth of 10 to 30% and a very attractive dividend. And here we can see the speakers that aren't speaking because I'm speaking. Evanoff. So Evanoff is basically a part of their healthcare services segment and i'll link that presentation down in the info box if you want to have a more precise look into that please check it out but i'll just skip that because it's a very very long part i think that video is already quite long and it will most likely have a few more minutes where i have to add a few things that i find are interesting one of these things that i find interesting high potential and special management two percent of the customers account for over 50% of the total pharmacy spend. That is very, very interesting in my opinion, because that shows that these 2% have unfortunately something special, most likely special disease, that needs that much money to be spent on. Yet for us, this means that the other 98%, they don't need that much money. So maybe some of them pay for health insurance services that they actually don't quite need, which is good for us as a health insurance shareholder. And another thing, we've got a 350 billion market across pharmacy and medical benefits over the next five years, expected mid to high single digit growth. Love it. And it's a big market. Talking about a big market. So the vital Behavioral and home health has 
already a market of 370 billion and is expected to be 600 to 800 billion by the year 2028. Why is their opportunity is $2.5 trillion. If you operate in a $2.5 trillion market and you're not totally stupid, there might be a chance for you to make a few bucks. And here comes something that I personally find is quite interesting. Because Warren Buffett once said, buy companies that are so good that even if the CEO is an idiot, the company still will survive because one day the CEO will be an idiot. I don't know the CEO of that company, NATO of United Health or Humana, yet I see there's a massive market and I see that that massive market might lead to these companies, in that case Cigna, profit from that market and make a few bucks that they can return to us as dividends. Hmm. Cigna Healthcare. So here we talk about the same as with Evernorth. You're more than welcome to go through all of that, but Really, it is quite a lot, and I'll just skip that, that we can continue with, in my opinion, the next important thing, which happened to be this side. So here we talk about the healthcare area, and so Signal Healthcare, and we see room to grow, yeah, true, because they got a 10% market share by members. And what we can see is if you got a 10% market share, there's a lot of room to grow. Yes, that's true. But... If you have a 10% market share, you should also ask yourself, why exactly do you only have a 10% market share and not a larger market share? So, I don't know. I don't. I simply don't. Here we can see something that I'm just quite confused about. What exactly is the point of that slide? Like, okay, here's a graph. Addressable market project drive in Medicare spending. Yeah, but I can't see any numbers. It's just, okay, yeah, it increases. Yeah, lovely. Sexual growth, 1.5 to 2 million expected annual net growth with Medicare Advantage. Like million members, million dollars. I don't know. Like, would you mind putting here numbers? I simply don't get that slide. If someone understands that slide, please, please explain it to me. I don't get it. Plan to win the goals. Well, with the existing assets, the capabilities they have and the investments, they target 10 to 15% growth. Love that. 10 to 15% growth is, in my opinion, totally amazing. Now, let's take a look at a few financial commitments. And the first thing we can see is we see the three lovely things we saw at the beginning. Update on our 2020 outlook, long-term financial targets, capital deployment framework, and 10 to 15% long-term earning per share growth. Our growth priorities, the ones we saw earlier. Outlook. At least $22.60 in earnings per share is at least $725 total medical co growth, cost, customer growth, 82 to 83.5 medical care, medical care ratio. I quite don't know what that numbers mean. I think if you're more into the US, you might understand those better. But what I can see is adjusted income from operations, Signal Healthcare, roughly $4 billion, given off, roughly $6 billion. So... Revenue growth algorithm, so we can see a 6 to 8% enterprise growth, so I would assume that is the revenue growth they target. And the enterprise foundation growth, so low, growing low to middle single digit, 60% is of the revenue still that foundation. And we can see now that is the Alex accelerated area, so 40% low double digit, low double digit is way better than low single digit. And what we can see, they want to move to 50-50 area to achieve across enterprise leverage in 2026. Well, enterprise leverage and the opportunity or what they what they want to achieve with that is 10 to 20 billion additional ever north revenue. And that would be solid if they achieve 10 to 20 billion additional revenue in, where is it, 2026. I mean, imagine just a 10% revenue margin would be 2 billion. Mm -hmm. Ever North long-term earnings growth target raised. 
pre-merger and here we have it so they merged with Evernorth they had two to four percent and now we can see in 2020 they had five to seven percent additional annual revenue from 2019 to 2022 40 billion love it love it here we see the same with signal healthcare long-term targets so you see these 10 to 8 percent growth and well if you combine all of that you that lovely slide and we can see that results into that growth of 10 to 13 percent if we take a look at the cash flow generation and capital deployment framework what we can see and what i personally find quite interesting is they assume from 2022 to 2026 cash flow from operations will be 50 billion and 10 billion will be used for capital expenditure and surplus to fund growth they want to have a 40 percent long-term debt to capitalization ratio which i personally think is quite good 30 percent or 20 percent in my opinion would be better because i, I don't like that strategic m a super but here comes a quite lovely thing if you take a look at those 40 billions so 20 percent shall be spent on dividends so in the next four years we will receive 10 billions in dividends kind of like that five billions or excuse no excuse me 20 percent of these 40 billions are 8 billion so 8 billion dividends 4 billion in debt repayment and 70 percent share repurchase or strategic m a let's assume they spent these totally 70 percent so 28 billion on stock buybacks so share repurchases now let's take a quick look again at the market cap summary 91 billion market cap that means that if we would if we say they increase it from 28 to 30 billion just because it's easier to calculate they would roughly buy back one third of all stock even if we say the market goes we, we use 100 billion as a market cap to calculate that would be 28 percent of the stocks outstanding right now would be bought back within the next four years holy fucking holy macaroni that is nice proven ability to grow and innovate through change that is a solid slide and a few closing remarks will be seen on trading view but i already want to thank you for watching my video give me thumbs up or thumbs down writing a comment and considering subscribing or oh, actually you just click on the subscribe button now let's take a quick look at trading view and if we do that we can see signal just made a new all-time high so they broke out here which is actually quite interesting i think i might enter a little position into that company because if we take a look at a long-term chart that speaks for itself all i want to see all i want to see left bottom corner upper right corner i wouldn't mind skipping those crashes here in 2002 and 2008 50% in one month that is ugly oh but but oil it looks solid and healthcare in my opinion is a very solid boring long-term industry as for example with united health if we just take a look at the united health chart it's pretty much the same left bottom corner upper right corner super dividend company super stock buyback company super company all in all so in my opinion Cigna is a really good company as always it's your decision read what i wrote in the info box about investing i take no responsibility but Cigna unite health they should be on your watch list and with that said i really hope you enjoyed the video see you soon guys bye